Hi everybody, welcome to my EOQ without cost video uh, by using Excel. So let's get right to it. All right, so what this does is combine two things. The first thing we're looking at here is the, the idea of our ABC inventory. Um, every company will label their most important um, inventory, highest value, what they really want to keep under cost control. That's your A inventory. Your B inventory is still very important, but not as important as your A inventory. So what I like to say is use a restaurant example. Your A inventory is your steak or your entree. Um, your B inventory is your side dish. And just for the heck of it, I'll call that broccoli and uh, baked potato. Now your C inventory, um, you could do cost accounting on, but why? Uh, in the restaurant an example, um, this is salt, pepper, oregano, basil. Typical restaurant will have, I don't know what, 30, 50 different spices. It really doesn't um, uh, make sense to do cost accounting on each one individually. So what the without cost method does is group all your um, uh, inventory together. You know, you figure if you're buying... Um, uh, you're buying the spices, you're buying that from all the same distributor. If you're a manufacturer, you're buying all your nuts, bolts, and washers from the same uh, distributor. If you're a fast food restaurant, you know, you're getting all your paper cups, your plastic lids, and uh, your straws and your napkins from the same distributor. So rather than do an EOQ on each individual, we do it on the grouping. Um, so here's kind of the theory of it right now. So uh, first of all, uh, this is the EOQ formula we've been using. So I just for illustration purposes of the next step, um, I wanted to show you that, you know, I've multiplied the square of three and five together and got 225. And then I take square root of that and it uh, comes out to 15. So I've solved that problem basically using uh, something similar to what we have been. So there's a mathematic trick that basically says we could take what's ever under this square root and split it into two square roots. Um, so I, this is what I did in the second uh, thing here. I took the square root of 9 and the square root of 25 and multiplied those together. So that's uh, effectively our, our uh, second um, equation right here. Um, then the other thing we do without cost is we just set the second part of the equation that has all our cost in it, the C sub O, the C sub H. We just call that X because we really don't care about them individually. We're going to look at them in a group. So um, that gives us these formulas here our q equals x times the square root of d, or for x is just q divided by d. Um, so that's the uh, formulas we're going to be working with. So the without cost formulas are really the same as we've been doing. Uh, we're just calling the cost side of it x. So x equals q divided by the square root of d. Since we're talking about uh, all the spices in a restaurant or all the kit, uh, cups, lids, straws, and napkins in a, in a fast food place, we sum them all together. So the squiggly in line in the front is a summation. Um, equation two is the same formula, just solved in a different way. And I'll leave that for another video. All right, so let's get into what without costs. There's two strategies. The first strategy is to reduce total cost of the C inventory by reducing the holding cost. So let's make believe we're given uh, this information here. Um, I only use three spices. If you could do it for three, you could do it for 100. Um, so with this, uh, I'm going to be using, uh, I notice I need the summation of Q, the summation of D, and the summation of N. Since I'm right here now, um, I'm just going to sum up my ends. Um, I just use the plus formulas. I usually use the sum, but I wanted to show you you could do it either way. Um, so the first thing we have to do is calculate our Q. Um, we've been calculating the number of orders per year using N equals D divided by Q. 
we use the same formula, but we just solve for Q here because I'm given D and N. All right, so you could see that's just 100 divided by 3, and the square root of D is just the square root of 100 there. Um, and uh, come on sorry my mouse wasn't cooperating there um all right so i just did that for for the whole list you know you could see see all the ones are the same um then i just summed up the two columns because i know i'm going to need the summation all right so the secret sauce is right here the next thing we have to do is calculate x um, we're going to be using equation 2 with this. It's simply, uh, we just summed up our square roots of d's, and we summed up the number of orders. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward at this point. You know, we just take these two sub um, summations right here. Um, the next is what I call q nu. Uh, some textbooks call it q star, or some just call it q. I like to give it a new name just to uh, signify you've changed the Q from our original Q. Um, so Q is just X times D. Uh, if we go back up, um, that's this formula we computed right here. So it's the same formula. But well, I'll get to the drama in a second. Um, and I just figure out our new N. So you notice what happens when we're doing this is our Q value changes and the number of orders change. Again, because we're just looking um, to get everything, the whole aggregate amount of the spices down, not each individual one. So what happens is I just came down and summed these up. Um, and if you look, uh, our, originally, our Q was about 51.83 uh, inventory level. Our inventory level has gone down to 42. So we know our holding annual holding costs or um, the average inventory, Q average, times our per unit inventory charge, C sub H. So if we reduce Q, uh, we reduce holding costs. And you could go through and put in the odd numbers for it and get an exact number. Uh, the other thing I want you to notice is our N stayed the same. Our new N is 12. Our original N is 12. What has changed is just the mix. All right, so that's our first strategy. Our second strategy is to reduce total cost uh, by reducing the ordering cost. All right, so the first part here remains the same, so I'm going to skip the drama and just leave it right in here. Uh, again, the secret sauce is this uh, calculating X here. Uh, so the second formation, uh, formula is the summation of Q divided, uh, divided by the summation of the square root of D. Um, then we use the X here uh, to calculate our Q nu, and we use the um, new Q nu to calculate the new N. All right, so once again, you notice our Qs have changed and our Ns have changed. We don't really care about each individual one. We want the summations to change. Um, so here you see we're reducing N, so our Q stays the same. What has changed is we have just 9.8 orders versus 12 orders. Since our ordering cost, total annual ordering costs, or N times uh, the cost per order, um, you can see by reducing the number of orders, we've reduced our cost. All right, I find in practical terms, usually most companies reducing your holding costs results in a bigger savings, but if you have a product, say, that's really expensive to ship, um, it might be to your advantage to, uh, uh, to use the ordering costs. I hope you liked the video, and thanks for watching. Uh, check out my other videos on the website.